So what kind of boat did this start out as? Uh, uh, what kind of boat was this to begin with? A sunfish and a laser and a Nicholson and a star. I cut them all So it's a star pieces. hull? Nah, part of it. Mostly. Uh, part of it, yeah. <laughs> um, the, everything is different because we're spread yes. out wider and you know, all kinds of things. Catch rig star. A uh, yaw rig star. Yeah, and it also has no uh, keel on it. Uh, no keel, yeah, you got the lee boards. It's uh, four and a half feet longer. You know. Stretched out far. Oh, yeah, lots of things. <laughs> that and is it awesome. Had the, uh, it had the uh, shape of a sharpie. Uh -huh. Is this uh first time on the EC for this boat or has this been oh, this is the first time anything. First time anything. Oh awesome. Just been out the river. It looks like a lot of thought and planning went into it. Oh, it's got a lot of it was built. There's another nice looking rig there. That's the return from last year. Chain yourself to your mission. Wow, there's a lot of reading here. Well, I hope you're sleeping when the sun's not up. That would be that would be good for both of us. What? <laughs> your, your, your gazelle and lion story there. It's in the morning when the lion wakes up. I hope the lion sleeps tonight. Day breaking, race day. You ready, Whitney? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Is that a clear? A what? That looks like an infrared camera. No, no, no. Just, just a real deal. Set and ready. What do you think, Colin? You're taking this. I think it's get a little n -n 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 nippy going over the next year. pass. Could be a little nippy. Nah, you'll be warm as soon as you get out to that first breeze there. <laughs> Look at that stuff. It's running hard left hey, or right there. Conquistador. Yes. If you catch me, I've got if I can. strawberry. Holy crap, you got like a whole cow there. If you, <laughs> a whole cow. If you catch me, if I catch you, I have it. Holy cow, you got a cow. So? <laughs> oh, it's so stingy. He's got some more jerky Always in his bag, too. Always think of yourself. Too. He look like he's shaking. <laughs> hey Josh, the funny part is, he's gonna be between us and smell it look, somehow. He's got <laughs> hey, what y'all don't know is I got my own stash, so I don't need either one of you. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. Not that, but I'll take some. No, but I have some. Back close mark. Here! <laughs> Windward mark. Windward mark. Here. Leeward Lauren. Here. Winter, yeah. white beard, <laughs> weed warrior, here. wildwood, water strider, here. water scout, here. paddle maker, here. sand shark, here. sails fast, here. loud mouth, here. sailor man, here. sail in, here, and barrow, barrow, she's here, yell it really loud little barrow, <laughs> cookie, <laughs> cookie, <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> <laughs> they both like cookies. <laughs> yeah. 
Safe. Godspeed. Let's do this. right there so I gotta get going again but uh, it's all good we're in the flat water now so time to put some miles down that wasn't bad was it did you stand or did you kneel it was over with in what two hours yeah Live from Action Everglades Town in Sarasota Bay, topping Tampa Bay. Hey, it was about right. Huh? Well, you know, it's tough, tough, huh? It was long. 26 miles in now. Tampa was quick and painful. Sarasota was <laughs> grueling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Pretty much anything on a one second period is yeah. gonna suck. Yeah. Especially when it's like two to three. Yeah. And I mean, that was bumpy. You couldn't even count to one. It was bumpy. You'd go 1,000, 1,000. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> this is uh, second day Everglades Challenge 2020. Um, didn't quite make checkpoint one last night. That was my goal, but. I was just getting too late. This three hour delay that we had to, for the start kind of set us all back. And so I decided to pull into this little island and camp for the night. So I'm just breaking down and getting ready to launch. It's gonna be a sloppy looking launch there. Why do I do this? That's why. Be out here one with the earth. any ferries left in Florida but Cape Heads has one Charlotte Harbor stirred up yesterday see everybody's challenge is not about having fun necessarily it's about facing your demons We'll break you sooner or later. But when you come out the other side, you're not who you were before. And that's why I race this thing. Some days it's fun. Some days it's just a slog. Today is another slog. Day two of the slog fest. Charlotte Harbor making me work today. Hour and a half, I'm not even halfway. Uh, I'm already tired, dude. Uh, this is 
is gonna be no fun. Pretty wavy out here. A lot of white caps, a lot of trees, a lot of spores. Pretty steep seas. Well, I'm almost across. Found this really nice sandbar to take a little break. After uh on my knees for eight miles. Three hours. I couldn't even stand up. So the wind died down a little bit right towards the end. I got uh, about another three quarter mile of crossing but I'll be able to stand on that. Pine Island. And uh check out this shell man. This thing's like huge. It's like a perfect shell too. Look at that thing. That's a nice shell there. Is that a whelk? I don't know. Conk, whelk, something big snail looking thing. Third day of the Everglades Challenge. I woke up and tied his way out, so I got a little bit of a hike this morning. <laughs> I pulled up right pretty close to where my board is now last night. Here's my, here's my campsite. I'm in the process of breaking down. I woke up pretty sore, but after moving around for a few minutes, I'm feeling better. And looking forward to a good day. The wind's supposed to die out later on today. And we're supposed to be able to get a nice paddle in, hopefully get down to halfway point today. So that's the goal for the day, the halfway point. That's called Picnic Island. That's where I spent the night last night. Pretty nice little campsite. Oh, I didn't even know there was a picnic table there. Huh. I was over to the left there. Somebody else was already in that right-hand side there, so. Came in quiet, stealth camped. Didn't wake him up. That's a good thing. Always want to be conscious of my fellow drivers not waking him up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Somebody pulls in at three o'clock in the morning and you're already nice and snoozing. You don't want to hear a bunch of banging around. So, four miles. <laughs> Five miles in four hours. A lot of it while I'm going backwards. It's been such a better day. This is the strongest it's been the whole trip so far. Uh, pulled up on this little beach here. The wind's supposed to die down today, so I pulled up here and I'm going to kind of take a nap. No sense in working too hard in this super hard wind because uh, hopefully that wind will die off later on and. Uh, to be easier paddling so anyways it's a tough day out there a couple of kayakers been walking the whole beach they're way up there now they've been walking for about a mile now so there is that option as well but i'm gonna go ahead and take me a break for a little bit have some lunch and then figure out what to do after that Get my board here Man, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Been making a couple of miles an hour here for the last couple of miles. I got a little bit of a leaf section here, but I'm getting ready to come back down to the wind again. So I just saw that spray, but too slow with a GoPro. Anyways, a couple more hours of this, and then I'm gonna take a break. If you wouldn't believe the smell from coming off of this island right here, but. A lot of pelicans, ibises, cormorants. They got it closed off to public access so the birds won't uh, be disturbed. So I'm gonna stay outside of the access area, but it's the uh, third sunset and I just got finally to where I usually get on the, uh, the uh, second night at about three o'clock in the morning. So, not real excited about my results. I've only done about 15 miles a day. I was hoping to get more in. I will be paddling some more. I'm not done paddling for the day, but um, yeah, not real, not real happy. But uh, it is what it is. It's the same for everybody. So we're all pretty close together, from what I can tell. Nobody's very far apart. So we're just all slogging through it. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be a better day. Good morning. Tuesday morning. 
spent a couple hours on the beach last night. Didn't bother setting up a tent. Just kind of laid out there on my ground pad with a mattress. My sleeping bag over me. Got a little cold, so I woke up and started paddling again. <laughs> so I stopped and had breakfast here on this island. It's called Kiwaden Island. And saw some wild deer. Lots of birds. It's a beautiful island. The, the house is up there. There's no roads here, so they have to fly in on a helicopter, I think. Because, uh, well, there's boat access on the back side, but I saw a helipad back there. And uh, beautiful beach. And the water is flat. Look at that flat ocean. That's what I was looking for. For three days, I've been working so hard. And it was nice last night I got out in this, and it was really flat. And I got to pick up, pick up on that again today. And making my way down to Big Marco down there. It's about 10 miles down. And uh, I'll have lunch there. Waypoint. <laughs> so, uh, usually I'm here about 14 hours earlier, so I'm a little behind this year. The weather was not ideal for the first couple days, but uh, it's flattened out now. The ocean is just beautiful. There's not a wave to be seen. There's a sailboat way out there. But, beautiful day on the water. Just getting ready to come into Big Marco Pass here. Just love that green water, blue water, sandbar. That's all beautiful stuff there. Yeah. A lot of people out on the beach today. Not this beach, but right behind me. And getting ready to pull in and have my burger. And maybe some onion rings. We'll see. Snook in. And Big Marco Key. Big Marco Island. Lunchtime. So I had my burger and then I paddled up to the town of Goodland and I'm in this little park. This is where we launched in January. We'll take a little snooze and dry a couple of things out, charge some batteries up, wait for the tide to turn. Once that tide turns then I'll start heading back out again and uh, try to make checkpoint two probably about 2 a.m. Midnight, something like that. Rest here in Goodland. You wouldn't believe how noisy a sleepy little town can be. <laughs> it wasn't very good sleep, but uh, I did get some rest anyway, and that counts in the EC. So I'll push on next for checkpoint this two. This is one of those times on the EC where you just have to take it all in. Right now, I feel like I'm the only one in the whole world. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's just quiet. Winds died down. Sun's getting ready to set. Nothing to do but paddle to checkpoint two. And I don't know where anybody else is. I'm just paddling my race right at this point. I'm not, I'm not even worried about where other people are right now. I took a nice little break. It's all about when you rest and who gets enough rest, I think. That's important. Fork upstream, but I'm back on course now. I added four miles to my overall total, but uh, I think it was worth it for that nice place of rest. And when I was coming out, I was greeted by a whole school of eagle rays jumping out of the water. I saw three of them jump out of the water. There must be a bunch of them out there. If you see three of them jumping, that's like, I've only seen like four ever. So it's super special to see that. And take a little break. I thought this was a little beach, but it's a little gravelly for me. I'm not going to stop here. I go to the next one, but looks like it's a little horseshoe crab graveyard here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Probably at least 20 of them here. They just get washed up here and that's it. I'll go a little further up to Turkey Key. See if I can't get a text out to my wife and find out what's going on with Josh. Find out what's going on with Mike. Saw another Eagle Ray jump out of the water. That was pretty cool. They seem to be doing a lot of jumping today. That's always a neat thing to see. Especially to see four of them. And one day I just doubled the number of times I've seen that happen. In one day. 200 mile mark. And just loving this little island here. 
you could paddle out in these 10,000 islands for years and never never explore them all I think look at that little thing it's got a nice little today protected little harbor kind of thing there pretty cool lots of birds a couple of beaches on it and it's just like perfect little spot to hang out for a while looks like it's got plenty of firewood probably from either Hurricane Michael or Hurricane Irma 200 miles right there yeah nice and quiet for a minute and then back out into the lumps and of course you got to throw a little rain into the mix wouldn't be ever going to challenge if it wasn't challenging <laughs> so a little couple little storms came moving through but uh just rain no no thunder thank goodness up close to an island i'd pull in if, the, if i thought there was any thunder coming but looks like it's okay for now i don't know where mike is but he's not far betsy said he was close to me earlier so i don't know what time that was but he was at the south end of an island and i was he was at the north end of an island i was at the south end pretty close to the same time <laughs> i keep looking back i don't see him i don't see him ahead so i don't know but he's he's out there somewhere hopefully he's uh holding strong i heard uh sounds like josh is okay not sure yet but sounds like uh there's pictures of him smiling on on the uh race owl app so i think he's gonna be all right uh my hallucinations so i had manatees one night and then i had like colored water and then last night was the coolest coming across chocolusky bay I was paddling into the moonlight and as the moonlight was I was paddling right straight in the moon and as the moon was glistening when it got closer to the board it would break up into numbers and symbols like physics symbols and it would be all mixed up in big jumbled up mess but it was like the inside of a computer or something it was pretty freaking awesome so I just want to remember that I can share it later up on this one I paddle a lot more at night a couple of reasons one being that uh, the winds have died down at night so that's good the other one was you know um, how to ride the tide in the flamingo which was 4 a.m. and then I got the same kind of situation here at Shark River I got a nice flood tide running in at 4 3 30 I think is high tide which means I can ride that flood all the way in I'm gonna be getting there at about uh, 1 30 I can ride that tide in all the way to uh, probably Joe River Chicky is where I'm going to be headed tonight, I think. I might make South Joe, but um, definitely Joe, Joe River. Show me the way to go home, oh Lord, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Had a little drink about an hour ago and it went straight to my head. Wherever I may roam, on land or sea or foam. You will always hear me singing this song. Show me the way to go home. I've got about six more miles of my passage to do, my night passage. But uh, so far it's been pretty good. The wind clocked around finally. So today I had headwind. I had three quarter on the right. It just went from, from basically a headwind to a tailwind oh, throughout the course of the day while I'm doing this passage out here. So nice uh, almost full moon full moon was a couple nights ago and really excited about getting into Joe River and riding that flood tide I'm a little early yet so I'm not in any big hurry hurry so the, the high tide is at three something and it's only like 11 30 right now so the tide's just starting to fill so I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time out here and enjoy this out here in the quiet for a few more minutes and then paddle on in I was gonna go to Highland or to graveyard called graveyard creek uh, campsite but then i realized that's a ground site and that's gonna be buggy as heck and i'd rather just sit out here in the water where there's no bugs instead of going in there to the to the uh campsite and, and <laughs> fighting bugs <laughs> i'll have to do that when i get to my other campsite anyway so that's just part of the everglades but uh come prepared yeah, it's, uh, i don't know 4 30 something like that a.m and feel like the current's still running in pretty good, so I'm going to keep pushing on. I pulled into Joe River Chicky. It's one of my favorite chickies. I, uh, 
I like this one because it's uh, set it has a really nice setting. It's in a curve in the river, and you can just uh, see a long ways both directions. And usually it's empty because it's too far from the from Flamingo for the casual trippers, and it's too close for the day trippers. So or for the for the overnighters, so it's usually vacant. Uh, got lucky today it was. Uh, gonna go to Flamingo and then see how I feel. I might press on to Shark Point, but probably gonna try to rack out a couple hours in Flamingo. Uh, these two cups of coffee I'm having here aren't helping, but. I had to do something just to slow myself down. If I just if I didn't do something, I would just jump off for a second and then get back on and get going. So this is giving me a chance to slow down a little bit, slow my roll. <laughs> um, so far, it's been a great race. Still got uh, 17 miles to Flamingo and then 35 miles to home. So about 52 miles left. So uh, looking forward to finishing this up hopefully it goes well it's not over yet there's a little, certainly a lot of people who fell apart in florida bay or gave up in flamingo so i don't think i'm going to give up at this point but you never know what could happen between flamingo and home i was surfing the tidal bore coming into shark river that was pretty sweet i was uh having a little hard time balancing and that just made it that much more dicey but it was really cool riding those big waves coming in they were they weren't real tall but they were long and, and just the right speed that you could surf them so it's kind of like rolling down a sort of tidal bore i made it to south but joe bay chicky just in time for the sunrise had to do a gopro uh, battery change so got fresh juice there it is. This is probably going to be the last sunrise of the trip because I'm hoping that uh, I'll be finishing it probably real late tonight. But I'm going to go. Uh, it's about another three hours to Flamingo. I'm going to go to Flamingo and then spend a couple hours there getting some rest and then push forward to the finish. Hopefully, get into Key Largo by midnight, but it might be just a little bit after. Here's one more of the sunrise. The Okeanos. That board performed superbly so far. Still got a little ways to go, but it saw me through some pretty crazy times. Hopefully, that's the last crazy times I'll have to ride through with that board. Getting prettier and prettier this morning. So nice and peaceful out here in the quiet. Looks like the breeze is building again. So that might turn on today. That's why I kept paddling all through the night because water was flat water was flat tides rising you keep going then later on when it's windy i'll take a nap made the corner turn into the flamingo canal it's about two and a half three miles i think three miles fairly straight canal looking thing bringing me into checkpoint number three so this is uh thursday morning Day five, and I'm gonna get down here to Flamingo, sleep a couple hours, and then cross the bay. So it ain't over yet. A lot can go wrong in that bay, but it's looking good. I'm encouraged, but also cautious. My first year doing this, I had a really bad experience in the bay, and it almost killed me. So I got a lot more respect for the bay. I've probably crossed it a couple dozen times, but all it takes is that one time and everything goes haywire. And uh, I guess if you were in the military, you'd say Murphy showed up. <laughs> so I think uh, Mike is considerably distance behind me now, but uh, he's still in the fight. I think he's uh, playing with his plan, which is awesome idea. You got to make a plan and execute it. So... He uh, did he did change his plan a little bit last night when I saw him. I talked him into coming into uh, checkpoint three, checkpoint two on that rising tide. So I don't know how his uh, plan comes out with the tides, but I know that uh, that rising tide makes a huge difference. Last night when I came in Shark Creek, there was almost like a tidal bore there that I was surfing coming in. It was huge swells that were just rolling right in. And the speed was just, I don't know what the speed was. I had my speedometer on, it was dark anyway, but 
you can just feel the whole board surging ahead like like you're doing a downwinder so that was pretty cool uh so definitely makes a big difference if you're working with the lungs or working against them if they're breathing out you want to be going out and if they're sucking air in or sucking water in you want to be going in go with the flow i've been down this canal several times but this is a marsh this is pretty cool those canals that were dug by various peoples at different times uh, allowed salt water to intrude into the Everglades which made the uh, advance of the mangroves inevitable and most everything I paddle through on a race or anytime I'm up here is, is mangroves so it's so rare to find some of the original freshwater uh, uh, marsh left uh, you know, non-mangrove, native plants. Look at that beautiful tree over there. Holy smokes. But, yeah, so they they uh, dug canals. It started out with the Indians. They dug canals to allow uh, for easy transport of goods. And then they transported salt water. And then, of course, once they closed all the supply of fresh water up above, more salt water intruded. But they got a dam down here at the uh, Flamingo Center and that blocks that old canal from transferring water now it is tidal so i guess it's brackish here but i guess it's fairly fresh because uh these kind of trees oh there's some red mangrove right there yeah red mangrove and there's some black mangrove in there i see the little roots yeah that's a big black mangrove there oh no that's, that's a red one sorry look air plants right next to it though those are on the marsh plant uh trees mangroves won't grow on they don't grow on mangroves typically because they like the uh they like the more freshwater tree area point three just one more to go let me get a couple hours rest here and then get back on try to finish up tonight it's already coming it's automatic okay thanks for coming to visit me you're very welcome right here watch this my pleasure mm -hmm. <laughs> Oops, I think I had it wrong. It's a kiss uh -oh. oh. Mm, careful. Darn. Careful of the lips. No time. Mm. <laughs> it's on video. Florida Bay presents the last challenge of the challenge. A lot of the sailboats came out and they couldn't go to weather tight enough to get through the, the cuts. So I think I saw most of them heading back to the Flamingo. I think I'm the only one out here right now that I see. So I'm going up here. I got to go up to Dump Key through there and then into a bay. And then I think I'm going to, I know a little place I can pull in the, for the night. Take a couple hours nap until this wind lets down a little bit. But luckily I got tide coming in, so I'm still making two and a half, three mile an hour. Even though it feels like I'm not going anywhere because of the wind. That's why it's nice to have that speedometer there. Tell me how fast I'm going. So, I am moving. I'm headed, I'm keeping that football. Heading to Key Largo. It's one of the things I do, I pretend like there's a football in front of the board. I eat that football to Key Largo, so I gotta keep that football moving. So we're moving the ball. So since I started paddling, I don't even know when, 11 o'clock this morning or whatever, but I really only slept three hours last night, so I'm pretty beat. And it's just windy as hell. I still got 25, six miles to go to get to, to the house or to the finish line. And I've never been to this island, but this looks like it's gonna do just fine. It's got some Put some high ground here. It's probably real buggy, but I'll put my th my thermocell on and I'll take care of that. It looks like a nice flat spot there to throw the tent out. And we'll get it all set up before it gets dark. And uh, do a little exploring. It looks like a little inland lake, maybe. There might be some sandy spots there to set up on. So, anyways, uh, all's good. Florida Bay Crossing is always tough. And uh, especially on the Everglades Challenge, because You've been going for so long. There's no sense in pushing it too hard. Um, I actually was taking it pretty easy out there, just kind of paddling pace, not going as fast as I could, but yeah, just 
because it's been such a long race. You don't want to overwork yourself. So, there's one last look at sunset there. I don't even know which sunset that is, I guess. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's uh, Thursday right day. Now. Just found something new that um, I don't bring a chair anymore. <laughs> Thing keeps poking down the ground and falling over. So um, usually when I get to camp, I set up a little tarp with all my stuff on it. See my tarp there with all my stuff on it, and then my Yeti bag is empty. So I just filled it up with air. Now I got an awesome seat. It's real comfortable. It won't sink in the ground. <laughs> so another stop there. It's uh, 4:30 Friday morning. Had a nice sleep here at this. Uh, Awesome campsite. I don't even know where it is, but I think it's Rankin Key or Rankin Bite or something. Anyways, there's my board there getting ready to pack up and head out and finish this thing up. Um, thank goodness the wind stopped. I got 25 miles to go and I'm coming home. Dawn on hopefully the last day here. Coming to the crocodile drag over. One of my favorite little spots out here in the back country. It's uh, surrounded by fields. Last year when Josh and I came through here, there were, it was actually out of the water on either side. So you just got this narrow cut going through the middle of two very shallow areas. If it's daylight, you see lots and lots of animals out here because when it shallows up, they come right into the channel here. So everything's in the, in the little channel. Coming up on Lake Key, got about eight miles to the finish. Just look at that beautiful green water out there. Isn't that crazy? Love this place. There's a little shallow up here. I'm gonna push up on it and get some food out and have a little snack. And then uh, get about eight miles to go. Still not there, but getting close. The Swash Keys, which is the last final leg of this uh, <laughs> saga. <laughs> that was a heck of a five miles right there. That was that was rough. I think I was going maybe 1.6 miles an hour. Something like that and so normally a five mile crossing takes a little bit over an hour this took like three yeah so beautiful though look at that pretty blue water out there that's because it's all stirred up full of sand because it's windy as all get out and then i'm right here in this nice smooth water area here just kind of holding up behind this island the cuts right around the corner there and uh it's kind of protected for a little bit there's a little bit of a little bit of like a protected area and then uh I got about another two miles or two and a half miles of open water to cross to get to the finish line. Hopefully I'll make it. Getting close. Yeah, brother. Right. Thank you so much. Chesapeake Tea Jam. No, don't you be disappointed. He he made it to Checkpoint 3, did a really great job. Um, stay right, are you here? Stay right. Hey, stay right. Hey, okay, guess not. Um, so we had four that started. Uh, Josh, are you here? No, Josh is, Josh is not well. They're, oh, no. Okay. Thank so, Conquistador, wonderful for finishing, and I, we love that they all get on the beach and, and do this. I think it's